All right, and welcome to the inside of the right side quarter panel. All right, so you probably hear that ticking. Bam. This thing was completely destroyed. Nope, nope, this is actually really good. The most important part of a pre-purchase inspection is drag racing. Testing its top speed is not negotiable. You gotta get on the highway and go whatever the car will do. Hey guys, welcome back to Legit Street Cars. My name is Alex and in today's video, I'm taking you through a complete pre-purchase inspection on the rarest modern AMG car ever made the 500 horsepower R63 AMG minivan. And I think they only brought about 30 to 50 of these to the United States. And I actually have two of them with me today. Now I actually have a third R63 AMG that's being delivered to my house in a few weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that. But today we're inspecting this one. It has 105,000 miles on it. And for part of this video, I'm gonna be using a tiny little inspection camera in places you guys may not have thought to look. So I hope after watching this video, you learn exactly how to properly inspect a vehicle. This can save you uh, a bunch of time, headache, and money uh, by avoiding a total disaster of a car. So before uh, we get to me showing you how to inspect one of these cars, and how to save a bunch of money on buying one. Let me show you how I save money every day shopping online by using Honey. Honey is a totally free web browser extension that automatically applies all the promo and coupon codes when you check out and it installs in just two clicks. One here and one here and you're done. Recently the battery in my C63 AMG went bad so I added one to my cart for in-store pickup, proceeded to check out and the dancing coin dude got to work. He scoured the internet for the best coupon codes and saved me a whopping $55. That's a 25% savings for literally doing nothing. Honey works on all the popular sites like Advanced Auto, eBay, Best Buy, and even tires from tire racks. And so not having Honey is like giving up free money. You definitely don't want to do that. So to sign up, just go to joinhoney.com slash legit streetcars. That's joinhoney.com slash legit streetcars, or just click on my link in the video description box. And a big thanks to Honey for sponsoring this video. Okay, my first step in any pre-purchase inspection has nothing to do with actual looking at the car it has to do with service records and history and taking a look at a GMC Acadia <laughs> no but seriously check this out this is the first thing I do uh, when I look at any car so imagine you find this GMC Acadia uh, on the internet for sale it looks absolutely beautiful right well take a look at what it looked like about two months ago BAM this thing was completely destroyed and I know that it sold for $6,200. Now it just sold for 20 grand uh, on eBay and they listed it as having a very minor accident. They said they replaced one fender, the hood, and the bumpers. Guys, this thing has actual frame damage. It's completely mangled. Airbags have gone up. Uh, you would want to know about this. So before I even go out and look at a car and waste any of my time, uh, I go to autoauctions.io. I'll leave a link for you guys uh, down below. It'll give you a discount code. These are very, very inexpensive reports. Uh, so I've mentioned this before in other videos, but autoauctions.io, what this does is it searches for auction history. So you'll find cars for sale. Some of them have a clean type uh, and they have been mangled, just completely totaled out. So you got to be careful. So obviously uh, I have already looked up this R63 and it'll say no results for this VIN number. Uh, so at that point, if you search for a VIN number and nothing comes up, you don't even pay for a report, which is awesome. Uh, so anyway, that is an excellent tool for you guys to use. Uh, you can also run a Carfax. Now most dealerships will give you one of these for free, uh, but they are kind of expensive for you to get. They're about 40 bucks for a single uh, report with auto auctions. It's just a few dollars. Getting a Carfax for free at the dealer is always a great idea. So this has an accident reported, uh, two previous owners, and a bunch of service history. Uh, so this is a good thing to look at as well. Uh, and then something you guys may not know about is what's called uh, a VMI or a Vehicle Master Inquiry. That's what Mercedes calls it. Most of the other manufacturers have something very, very similar. Uh, but what this shows you is... Uh, all the options, the build date, uh, and it'll show you all the warranty work that's been done to the vehicle. So you want this to be nice and thick like this one. So uh, some of these VMIs, depending on what dealer it was maintained at, will show all of the customer pay work. So you wanna get familiar with common issues with the type of vehicle you're looking for. And you guys probably know this, but the M156 engine in the R63 had a head bolt issue. 
Check it out. Cylinder head bolt. It says bolt. They replaced them all. <laughs> uh, cylinder head gasket. We can see this was a major repair here. Uh, and as we follow this along, some of the air struts have been replaced. These are big dollar uh, items. The camshaft adjuster. Uh, there's an intake valve. It probably had an intake manifold as well. So you can also call the dealership and try and get more in-depth information. But this uh, VMI looks fantastic. A bunch of stuff uh, has been done to this fairly recently. So uh, you want to look at service records. If the previous owner has a bunch of records as well with the car, that is a major plus. But it, it's tough to buy one of these German cars without uh, a stack of records, guys. I would honestly move on if you find a car that has absolutely no service history whatsoever, just because you can find a better one. Not necessarily with an R63, though. They're kind of rare. So either a Carfax or AutoAuctions.io will tell you the title history. So I know that this is a clean title vehicle. Uh, I've been able to take a look at all the maintenance records. Records. I know exactly what's been done to this car recently. Now we can move on to the paintwork, the bodywork, and the structure of the vehicle. And I do this uh, before we get into the engine and the transmission and all that good stuff. So right off the bat, I don't know if you guys can see on camera, but that headlight looks to be kind of a little bit more yellow than that. That looks brand new. Now, in this particular case, uh, the owner of the car, which is iCar Chicago uh, here in Skokie, Illinois, they actually own this one uh, and the white one, which may be for sale, guys. Check the link down below. They drove this for two years personally because they loved it, and they claim they're going to drive the white one as well. They have Ferraris and stuff here, but they choose to drive these R63s. But check down below. Uh, they're thinking about putting it up. I'm not really sure. But anyway, uh, they were able to tell me that this was involved in an accident. They had pictures and everything. Uh, it was just an honest uh, accident. Someone hit their fender and headlight. Uh, so I know that this headlight's been replaced uh, and this fender will check the structure here in a moment. But if you see that one of the headlights is yellowed more than the other, it could have simply failed or it could have been whacked in that corner and replaced. So definitely something uh, to take a look at. So next up, we want to look at body lines. So since we know that this was hit here, we want to take a look at the fender to hood gap and then compare it to the side uh, that doesn't look to be damaged at all. Now this looks to be perfect. A lot of this you can do by eye uh, and on cars like this, the body lines are usually pretty good. Now a Tesla on the other hand, probably all out of whack. I know this from experience, but uh, most of these Mercedes, you can tell if the gaps are way off and the easiest way is to just compare one side to another. So this gap looks absolutely perfect. We wanna look at the gap from the fender to the front of the door. These gaps right here are important. And if you have trim like this, this is a really good indication right here. If one of them is higher up than the other, you know the alignment is off. Now this has an electronic tailgate. So we definitely want to look at the clearance here on this side compare it to this side, these things can be kind of problematic. So uh, you can measure this uh, and find out specifically what it is. And there is a factory spec, but most of the time looking at it by eye is good enough. So we want to open up uh, the gas cap cover as well. A lot of times if there was an accident here in the quarter panel, uh, you'll see a bunch of buffing compound in here. This looks really, really clean. Uh, and the stickers look original as well. So you want to look at date codes on any sticker you find on the car and make sure it correlates uh, with roughly the year of the vehicle and definitely the build date. Next, I like to inspect the paint on the vehicle using a very bright paint inspection light. What you wanna do is go to two panels that are right next to each other, shine the light right in there, and if one side has been painted poorly, you'll be able to tell a slight color difference. So we know this fender uh, has been painted. They most likely blended it a little bit into the door and into the hood, and I think they did a fantastic job. So I've looked around the entire vehicle with this light. Uh, you can tell some areas that have been painted. Like we said, this was in an accident, uh, but the rest of it looks to be original. Uh, something that's not abnormal at all is for you to find a little bit of orange peel or a color differential from the bumpers uh, to the metal body. A lot of these cars, the bumpers just don't match exactly from the factory, uh, but you definitely want to pay close attention. A lot of front and rear bumpers have been resprayed, not the end of the world, uh, but the paint on this car looks fantastic. So after you inspect all the paint, obviously look for paint chips and dents so you can negotiate uh, on the price of the vehicle. You want to make sure that areas, especially like the quarter panels, aren't just caked up with Bondo. And a lot of times you can't tell that that's been done from the outside of the car. It's painted. It looks really nice. So you have to look 
inside, on the inside part of the panel. So you want to disassemble uh, any trunk panels that they'll allow you to disassemble. Most of them come right off like this and you can take a really nice look, kind of hard to show uh, on camera, but you can see the inside of the quarter panel from here. Now I like to take it a step further and that is with the little tiny inspection camera. There are a lot of different areas that you can slide one of these cameras into uh, without really disassembling anything. So I used an interior panel tool right here. We just pulled down this inner fender liner a little bit and we have the camera in here and what we're looking at is the inside of the quarter panel so we want to see if there's any little hammer marks any leftover bondo or anything that doesn't look like totally factory smooth metal all right and welcome to the inside of the quarter panel on the right side so aside from all of the metal work that we're looking at we can also see components that might be hidden under here so this includes hoses wiring harnesses maybe a charcoal canister uh, so these cameras can really help with diagnosis as well but but right now, we are focusing on this metalwork. So this is the inside of the quarter panel. Uh, you'll see the factory seam sealer as well. So far, so good. Uh, and now we are coming up to what looks to be something bad. Let's get a little bit closer. And nope, nope, this is actually really good. This is where the bumper meets the quarter panel uh, and it kind of is bolted in. And that is just dirt and debris that's built up uh, over the course of roughly 13 years. So this is actually a really good sign. If this was all clean, too clean on a 100,000 mile vehicle, then maybe something had been done back there. Not necessarily something really bad, but this is what we're really trying to focus on. The metal work on the inside looks totally factory. We don't see any hammer marks or anything like that. Now, now what we're looking at here is the filler neck. This is where you put your fuel in. This is a great place to look around because sometimes if a car has been hit in this area, this filler neck is not going to line up perfectly uh, and you're going to be able to really tell where that seal meets the body uh, that something has been played with. Uh, so we're looking at the factory seam sealer. We're looking at the amount of dust and dirt in here and it doesn't look like it's been disturbed at all. So, so far on this side, everything looks great and I'll put some links down below for some good cameras that I've used used. They're very inexpensive on Amazon, uh, but these can be a total lifesaver. So if you have the time during your pre-purchase inspection, use these cameras. It might totally save you from buying a car that was previously wrecked and not repaired properly. The possibilities with the boroscope or endoscope or however you want to call that little tiny camera are endless. So depending on the type of vehicle you have, uh, let's say it's a Chevy truck, you want to make sure the rockers aren't rusted out. You can stick that camera uh, from behind into the rockers. Uh, uh, you can also take apart one of the seals really easy, stick it in here, check out the inside of the quarter panel on this side. So wherever you can stick this in, depending on what you're working on, could potentially help you out big time. So uh, speaking of these seals, I like to kind of just peel them off a little bit. They just go right back on, no big deal at all. But you can tell uh, on the pinch weld here, uh, if it's been smashed in, a lot of times uh, you'll either see some paint work or some buffing compound, or this is still a little bit crumpled. Uh, so you wanna take a quick look behind seals. That can tell you uh, a lot about the condition of the vehicle. The seals aren't difficult to remove or install. They just simply slide right back into their groove. Continuing with the structure of the vehicle, we want to take a look at frame rails. So we're going to do some of this when we lift the vehicle in the air, uh, but you can see the top of the front frame rails pretty well on most vehicles uh, just by opening the hood. So we can see we have the frame rail extension. So that is going to usually uh, bolt into a flange that goes to the rest of the frame rail, or it's just one really long uh, rail. So that goes to the front crash bar. Uh, and what you want to look at is that this is dirty and dusty, especially in a higher mileage car. If it's clean or scratched up or hammered up or something along those lines, uh, it may have been touched. So these look to be pretty good from the top side, but we're gonna continue the inspection of the frame rails from the bottom as well, along with the inspection of all the bracketry uh, around them. And another area you wanna take a look at are headlight tabs. You wanna look at this top core support, uh, make sure that the stickers on there look factory. This one is missing. Uh, sometimes they do come off and you do wanna take a look at all of the bolts to see if they've been turned. Now, in this case, we know they have because the fender was replaced placed. Uh, but on a car that claims to have never been in an accident, you want to make sure that these bolts 
are nicely painted from the factory and not all scratched up and that the fender hasn't shifted at all either. Uh, take a look at the inside of the hood as well. And this is another area where the inspection light uh, is gonna play a big role. So you wanna see the insides uh, of the fender. You can just get your light in a little hole like that. You gotta get creative uh, and you can take a peek. Before we lift the car and take a better look at the frame and the floorboards, uh, we are gonna hook up the scanner, run it for codes, and I'm gonna show you guys a little trick to make sure that they haven't simply just cleared all the codes out of the system. Okay, so before we even check for codes, we wanna see if the readiness monitors are set. So if someone clears the codes, these would be incomplete. And this takes about 50 to sometimes a couple hundred miles to reset. Basically, these are emissions control devices that have to go through a drive cycle for a very long time in order to be okay. So we're looking for a bunch of okays. If it says NA, that's fine. Some of these systems uh, aren't on the particular vehicle that you're looking at. And we have EGR, like it doesn't have EGR, but we have the uh, Malfunction indicator is off, that's good. Misfire, okay. Uh, so far, so good. So let's back up here. So you can still check for codes, that's never a bad idea. Stored codes, we shouldn't have any. We're good. Pending codes and nothing, no pending codes either. So this is just for the engine control module. Uh, you're gonna want a scanner that can look into all the other control modules as well. So this one will do SRS uh, and ABS. Um, but this is a cheap generic scanner. I just wanted to show you guys on this because it's what most of you guys have. But if you're paying uh, for an actual inspection at a dealership, they're going to scan the entire car. And a car like this is going to have probably 20 to 30 modules. But during the test drive, if we don't have any warning lights and a function test of everything in the vehicle works, uh, you should be fine. Now, I'm not going to go through the function test of every little thing in this car, but just keep it simple with whatever vehicle you're looking at. Press every single button in that car. Try the radio, try the air conditioning, make sure the windows roll up and down, that the sunroof works, uh, that you don't have any warning lights on the cluster. Basically treat it like your own car, press all the buttons, make sure everything works. So at this point, we are moving on. We're going to start checking fluids. We're going to see how this engine runs and then she's going up in the air. All right, next up, you want to check all the fluids that you can check on the vehicle. So luckily, uh, this car has an engine oil dipstick. A lot of the Mercedes uh, around this time did not have an oil dipstick, so you had to check in the cluster the level of the oil, not a big deal. Uh, but we have a dipstick, so let's just take a look. The level uh, is right in the middle, that's good. Give it a smell, make sure it doesn't smell like gas or anything like that. Uh, and so far this is looking pretty good. And then every car is gonna be different. For example, this one, we really can't check the transmission fluid easily. We'd have to actually drain some of it out and check the temperature of the transmission. It's just really not realistic uh, on this type of pre-purchase inspection. Uh, but we can check the power steering fluid, basically anything you can check, power steering fluid, brake fluid, coolant, uh, you're gonna to wanna to check. So this is a little bit low, uh, no biggie, looks normal. We're gonna go ahead and check the condition of the brake fluid as well. Just make sure it doesn't look dark and dirty. Uh, and let's take a look at this coolant as well. Now taking a look at the engine's coolant is very, very important. So there are engine oil coolers and transmission oil coolers that can break and they can mix in with the coolant and cause a ton of damage uh, to the cooling system, to the transmission and a few other things. So this looks very clean. So what we're looking for is even a slight film of oil, which would be right at the top or if it looks we call it a strawberry milkshake, but if it looks kind of reddish, pinkish, uh, that could be transmission fluid. If it looks brown, kind of like a chocolate milkshake, <laughs> then that is engine oil. So this looks perfect. Uh, so our next step is to start the engine and we don't want to see any bubbles coming up from that coolant. If we do, this thing might have a bad head gasket. Okay, so I must warn everybody not to remove the coolant cap. If you have a hot engine, you're gonna get burned. Uh, but if you have a totally cold engine like this, you can run it with the cap off for a few minutes. Uh, it's not gonna hurt anything at all. And we don't have any bubbles whatsoever. So we can pretty safely say that the head gaskets on this car uh, are in good shape. Now you guys know, these things had notorious issues uh, with the head bolts, and as you saw on the VMI, they have been replaced, which is a huge plus, but we do hear a little bit of a ticking noise. Let me get closer for you. All right, so you probably hear that ticking. 
And if you saw my factory defect video on the M156 engine, then you know that ticking noise could be an issue with the camshafts, the lifters, uh, or the camshaft adjusters in the front. Now, I know that a few of these camshaft adjusters uh, have been replaced, and normally that noise goes away after it warms up a little bit. But check this out. It's been literally about one or two minutes of this running, and the noise is totally gone. So most of these M156 engines will tick a little bit when they're really, really cold. And as you can see here, our engine's not even up to operating temperature and the ticking noise is totally gone. So this can be somewhat of a normal thing on these engines. My C63 does a little bit of this as well. So comment down below if you have one of these M156s, does yours have a little bit of a tick like you just heard uh, only when the engine is cold? But Either way, a really, really good selling point to this particular vehicle is that it still carries a bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, a good bumper-to-bumper -bumper extended warranty. So some of these aftermarket warranties are horrible. They'll fight you tooth and nail on every single claim. Uh, but this one is excellent. This is a great service plan. It wasn't cheap. And I still think it has uh, roughly about a year left. So if this ticking noise developed further, I would bring it in almost immediately. Actually, I'd probably bring it in now just to see if they would take a look uh, at the lifters and the camshaft anyway especially at the dealer that might be a pretty good ticket for them so something that I would definitely bring up to someone paying me for a pre-purchase inspection uh, would be an extended warranty if you don't work on your car uh, yourself at home in your garage uh, with these older European cars if you can get one at a reasonable price and it's a good quality warranty they will pay for themselves over and over again uh, as you guys have probably Probably seen in a few other YouTubers videos. Other than listening to the engine for a few minutes, waiting for it to warm up, you just want to take a good look at the front timing cover and all the accessories, make sure nothing is wobbling around, make sure you don't have a bunch of oil all over the place, and this thing looks really nice and clean. I know this car was very, very maintained, all of the service is up to date, uh, so I don't really see any issues here at all, uh, but we're going to be able to take a better look once we lift the vehicle, and if you guys don't have a lift, if you're doing this in the middle of the street, you at least want to bring some tools to pop the lower engine panels off and get on your back. I've done this a few times as well and it is definitely worth it you're gonna get dirty uh, but whatever that might save you uh, a lot of money if you realize that something is terribly wrong down there so we have a lift here at iCars so let's lift her up all right so we have the panels off from underneath we're gonna be taking a look for oil leaks uh, and any worn out suspension components but I like to go right for the frame from the bottom. I really, really like to spend some time uh, on the frame rails and make sure that everything lines up. Uh, and another little trick here is see that shield right there? If that shield isn't bent exactly to the shape of the frame rail, uh, it might have been messed with, played with. So basically, you, what you're looking for is anything that looks slightly out of place that might lead you to the bigger problem. So the shield being bent in itself wouldn't be the issue, but what else is going on here? So uh, this looks dirty. Uh, that's great. We want it to look dusty. Uh, we want it to match the age and mileage of the vehicle, and it definitely does that. Uh, so we're also looking at the subframe. This is the, the big bottom subframe that holds the engine and the suspension and all that good stuff. Uh, everything looks fine there. If you see a control arm that's rusted like this, it's most likely uh, an aftermarket control arm. The factory ones were just coated better. So not the end of the world. This is just light surface rust. Doesn't look pretty. I would personally paint it because it bothers me, uh, but that's fine. So I've already checked uh, all the joints here. So we have the ball joints, uh, the tie rod joints, uh, and we want to take a look at all the bushings in here, make sure they're not cracked up. They look very, very tight. Here is a nice visible one. You guys can see it looks perfect. Uh, so the suspension is checking out nicely. And I was able to tell on the VMI that all of these struts are at least most of these struts, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes, uh, have been replaced and I don't see anything leaking. I don't hear any hissing noises. Uh, so this has the air suspension and it looks to be in a really, really good shape. See this airbag right here? That looks newer to me. So uh, I would say this air suspension 
is in excellent condition. And something else, when you look at an air suspension car or really any car is make sure you get there in the morning, especially if it's cold and the car's been sitting outside and make sure that you get to start it for the first time. Some dealerships that know that the car is leaking air will fire the car up, air it up, and the car can stay level for hours afterwards. So make sure when you call the dealership that you are the first person to start the car that will check your air suspension and it'll check for any weird engine noises as well. You wanna start the car when it is cold. So moving on, oil leaks. We're looking really, really good here, guys. I don't really see anything at all. Uh, they just did an oil change. They changed the little seal here. That's a good sign. Uh, moving on here, this is normally where you would see like a rear main seal leak. It's missing the uh, plastic inspection cover for some reason, no big deal, uh, but we don't really see any leak at all. Maybe some remnants of an old leak from before, uh, but definitely nothing live, nothing active. Uh, we have a totally dry transmission pan. Uh, moving along here, we see the transmission mount and we see the transfer case totally dry as well. Uh, so I don't see any leaks here. That is awesome because they can get really expensive, especially uh, on an AMG car. Uh, and then we're just looking over the exhaust. Everything looks in place, factory. It doesn't look like this car has any modifications uh, whatsoever. So I've already taken a look at the brake pads and rotors as well. You wanna just make sure that you have a lot of meat left. Otherwise you're gonna be left replacing these gigantic Mercedes brakes on your own and they can get really, really expensive. So you wanna take a look at the pad life on the inner and outer pad. Uh, and then obviously take a look at the tread depth on all of the tires. It's also important to check the unibody and the crash bar and the little frame rail extension uh, underneath the back bumper. And you can do this without a lift. You can just get up underneath the car and take a look at this little extension and how it bolts in right here. Uh, so just make sure this isn't kind of crumpled in at all. None of the paint, the factory seam sealer is missing, anything like that. Any Anything that indicates uh, that this was pushed in uh, from the backside and damaged and this looks to be in a really good shape we have a little bit of surface rust that's perfect it's right in line with the age of this vehicle so far everything mechanically and structure wise on this r63 is checking out uh, but it's not absolutely perfect if you're paying for a pre-purchase inspection you're going to want to know the condition of the wheels if there's any rash like this uh, you're going to want to know a detailed report with pictures of the condition of the paint so this isn't absolutely perfect. This has 105,000 miles on it. Uh, so it is not a total show car. I would note stuff like this. You can see a couple light scratches in the front bumper. What I'm looking for personally on a used car like this is structural issues, major engine transmission issues, suspension, tires, brakes, kind of like the big stuff. Everything else uh, you know, could use a little bit of reconditioning. And honestly, at that point, you can use some of that sometimes when you're negotiating a deal. Uh, but overall, you really Really want to focus your limited time on the major points of the car as I'm showing you right now. So uh, at this point, we got to take this thing out on the road. We have to get the engine fully warmed up. Uh, you definitely want to take it out for a very long test drive if possible, because you can find a lot of hidden issues with a car just by driving it. You guys know that pretty much every Mercedes I bought for my channel has had bad engine mounts. So we're going to check that right now by simply brake torquing the engine. Okay, so those are good engine mounts. There will inevitably be people in the comment section saying they're bad because the engine moves a little. Guys, they're hydraulic filled mounts. The engine is gonna torque a little bit, especially when you're hammering the accelerator pedal. So I get this, it literally in my videos where I've replaced them, I put brand new engine mounts in there. I show something like that and people, or maybe the car's on the dyno and people are like, your engine mounts are bad. They're gonna move a little. You guys wanna see what a really bad engine mount looks like? All right, we're at full operating temperature. Let's put it into drive and take off in the R63 AMG. And if you guys are OGs to the channel, then you recognize this as being one of the first cars uh, that I reviewed uh, roughly two and a half years ago. And I pulled out this exact road right here with some really, really annoying music on in the background. I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I think I punched it right here too. So let's do that again. Yeah, and it still feels absolutely amazing. So don't be shy to go wide open throttle, guys, on a test drive. 
Uh, if the previous owner has an issue with it, then let them drive. Um, you need to go wide open throttle. You need to make sure that the transmission is shifting properly uh, and that the engine is able to rev uh, to its red line. In this case, I think it's about 7,000 RPM. You wanna try and find the bumpiest road possible. I live in Chicago, so it's we're in the suburbs right now, so the roads are pretty nice. Uh, but normally, where I live, there are bumps all over the place. So let's try one of these side streets. We wanna find some potholes. Don't blow the guy's wheels out, but you want to make sure that you don't have any creaking uh, or rattling noises coming from the suspension. Sometimes if snow is all you got, you gotta go over it. Okay, so I didn't hear any weird knocking noises or anything. Let's try this again. We got plenty of snow. No, nothing, nothing at all. So the suspension looked really nice uh, from under the car and that's definitely translating into a nice, smooth and quiet ride uh, right now. And the engine just sounds absolutely perfect. And then just take a look in your rear view mirror for any smoke coming out of the tailpipe. You don't want really to see anything at all. Get a little speed going and then just hit, hit the brakes and you don't wanna see any of this. You want it to be smooth as glass. If you see any of this going back and forth with the steering wheel, then you probably have warped rotors. Now, the most important part of a pre-purchase inspection is drag racing against some random person on the road. And if you win, it's a good car. Hey, check it out. We have another black R-Class in front of us, although it's definitely not an R63. We have your standard R350 4Matic. Not a bad car, not a bad car. You can get those for like five, six grand now. Now, if the previous owner won't let you do this next part, I would just walk away from the car. Testing its top speed is not negotiable at all. You gotta get on the highway and go whatever the car will do. <laughs> just kidding, guys, just kidding. I think this one will do 155 or something like that, but you do wanna get it on the highway. Uh, get up to whatever the speed limit is, 65, 70, wherever you live, uh, and just cruise. See if you can cruise for five, 10 miles. Make sure the engine's not gonna overheat. Make sure you don't hear any weird rattling noises from the engine, uh, and you should be good. This will give you a really good sign uh, on the mechanical condition of the car is just simply taking it out on the open highway. Uh, and of course, you wanna give it a few whacks. Only when you have an open road though, like that so you want to make sure it's downshifting properly uh, and this one is it shifts perfectly the downshifts the upshifts it even hangs up there because the transmission is amg tuned <laughs> and this engine just sounds so so good what i'd love to see on an r63 is some exhaust work something similar to my c63 a mean sounding minivan would be fantastic and there you have it that's pretty much everything i look for when inspecting a used car so i hope that this video has really helped you out i hope that you learned some tips and tricks like checking the readiness monitors like using a little snake camera to your advantage to check for hidden damage these are the types of things that I've learned over many, many years of inspecting vehicles. And believe me, they have saved me. They have saved friends and clients a lot of headache by avoiding total disasters. Uh, with that being said, if you liked this video, don't forget, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, follow me on Instagram at Legit Streetcars and on Facebook as well. And most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.